Hi there, everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of probability. And in some future videos, we'll talk about some of the more um, in-depth aspects of it. All right, so right now, we're just going to look at the basics. Let's take a look at uh, this starting stuff. Okay, so um, we're going to just talk about um, uh, introducing what probability is. We're going to talk about what probability distributions are talk about the concept of sample space, and we're going to talk about computing probabilities when we have equally likely outcomes. So a simple situation in which we're able to compute probabilities. Um, all right, so introducing probability here. So probability is, um, it's just the likelihood that an event is going to occur, okay? It's a measurement of the likelihood that something's going to occur. And you can also think of this as if you were to uh, perform um, some routine uh, over and over and over and over and over again, it's the proportion of times that that event would occur in the long run. So if you were to imagine doing this experiment like rolling a die or tossing a coin or, or um, throwing a dart at a dartboard an infinite number of times, what proportion of the times would you achieve a particular result. That proportion is going to be the probability. All right, And because it's a proportion, it's the number of times it occurs divided by the total number of times you tried it. Right, So that's always a fraction that's between 0 and 1. Of course, you can always write it as a decimal as well. But always remember, probability is always a number between 0 and 1. If you ever get a number bigger than 1, you did something wrong. Okay, sometimes people talk about probability as a percentage. Okay, that's fine, but just remember that um, if anyone asks you for the actual value, you're going to convert that percentage to a decimal and you'll always get something between zero and one. So here are some examples. Uh, a fair coin is tossed. Okay, so I'm going to toss a coin. Uh, what is the probability that I get heads? And what is the probability that I get tails? Well, let's think about heads. So if I were to toss that coin over and over and over and over and over again, what proportion of the times would I expect to get heads? Well, it's not too surprising that I would get heads about half the time, right? And so that means the probability of getting heads is one half. And what's the probability of getting tails? Well, the other half of the time, I'm going to get tails. So probability of getting tails is one half as well. Okay, what if we roll a six-sided die, a fair six-sided die? That means each number on the die is just as likely to come up as any number. So I can get any number between one and six. What's the probability that I roll a one? Well, if there's six possible numbers and each one is equally likely, each one must occur one-sixth of the time, right? So the probability of rolling a one would be a sixth. Uh, rolling a two, well, it's just another number. So it also uh, is a sixth. Each number should have probability one sixth of coming up, regardless of the number. So one and two. Well, rolling a one is one sixth. Probability of rolling a two is one sixth. What about the probability of not rolling a two? Well, if 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 one sixth of the time I roll a two, that means five sixths of the time I don't. So the probability of not rolling a two would be five sixths. And um, rolling a five or a six. Well, here. Um, if we if we look at this, um, you know, we have our numbers, our possibilities, three, one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? Uh, getting a five or a six, if you look at this, it is exactly uh, one third of the total possibilities. It's two sixths of the total possibilities. So I would expect the probability here to be two sixths or one third. If you simplify two sixths, of course, you get one third. Right, so these are just some simple probability calculations. Okay, um, let's look at a um, let's look at some data here. So um, people's preferences to a survey question are depicted in this pie chart. What is the probability that a randomly chosen person's response was a strongly agree? Well, twenty percent of people chose strongly agree, right? So if I were to choose a person at random from this population, right, what proportion of the times would I expect to get one of these people? 
Well, 20% of the time, because 20% of people had that view. So the probability here, um, the probability here for strongly agree would be, um, sorry, I can't see where my paper is, where the slide is. It's blending in so well. Um, 0 0.20, all right? That would be the probability that they strongly agree. What would be the probability that they agree? Well, that's this group of people. See if you can figure that one out. The probability that a randomly chosen person just is one of these people. Well, it's 0 0.4. And what about, let me label these so it's a little easier to see. What about the probability that they do not agree? Well, not agree means the opposite of these people, okay? Well, <laughs> that one's a little vague, isn't it? Do I mean the opposite of these people, or do I mean the opposite of this group? Maybe if they don't agree, it means they're not the people who agree, nor are they the people who strongly agree, right? So it looks like it would be the opposite of these people. There's 60% of the people that agree or strongly agree. So if they don't agree with it, they're one of these people, right? Right, so I would say uh, to be here or here is this is 0.3, this is 0.1. Uh, in total, that's 40%, so that's 0.4. It's a little open to interpretation. If I meant just the opposite of this group, of course, it would be 0.6. Right? Agree or strongly agree. So we're looking at this group. right? So if they're in here or in here, you're one of these people. Well, how, what, percentage of those, what percentage of the people constitute this much? 60%. Right? So the probability would be 0 0.6. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got next here. A bar graph. And I'm going to have to get out of the way for this one. All right. Uh, people's highest um, levels of education are depicted in the, in the bar graph to the right. What is the probability that a randomly chosen person's education level was? Let's start with high school. What's the probability that their highest education level was high school? Well, looking at the bar here for high school, um, five people out of the total were had a higher highest education level of high school. Um, Last time when we did the pie chart, we were looking at percentages. Can I convert these into percentages? Sorry, I think my arrow was pointing. I, have, I see two arrows on my screen, so it's, I have to keep track of which one's which. Because I'm seeing my, it's, 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 it's complicated. It's my video editing software and stuff. So this is the high school group, right? The five. Um, what proportion of people were from high school? Well, what is the total number of people? Where if I was to add up all these numbers, Go ahead and do that. Add them all up. You get 90, right? So that means that 5 out of 90 of the people have a highest education level of high school, right? So if I'm going to do the high school one here, um, I will take 5 out of 90. That would be the probability, okay? Uh, what about associates? Well, associates, um, 18 out of 90 would be my probability for associates. What about not doctoral? Well, doctoral is four out of 90. If I say not doctoral, that's everybody else, anybody else, right? So how many people are there that didn't have doctoral? Well, if there's 90 total people, that means there's 86 people that didn't have doctoral degrees. So that probability for not doctoral would be 86 out of 90. And what about doctoral or master's? Well, what's the probability of being one of these people? Well, that's 28 total out of 90. So that would be 28 out of 90. Okay? So just some basic probabilities just by reading charts and, and uh, thinking about the basics of things. What is a probability distribution? Probability, <laughs> probability distribution is a... Um, list of all the possible outcomes. I'm just going to turn myself off here. Uh, how do I do that? 
not that one. There we go. It's the list of all the possible outcomes uh, together with e the probability of each outcome. Okay, so here we have the outcome one, two, three, four, five, six. We're rolling a six-sided die, right? So these are our possible outcomes. Each outcome, as we can see, has an equal probability. And we said before that each one of these is probability one-sixth. I've converted that to a decimal here. That's what we're seeing, 0.1667 is roughly one-sixth. Okay, so this is a probability distribution. Each outcome together with the probabilities in which they occur. Um, here's another example. Toss four fair coins and count the number of heads. So I'm going to take like four nickels and I toss them in the air and I'm going to count how many heads I get. Well, I could get zero heads and the likelihood of that is one sixteenth. I could get exactly one head and that's four out of sixteen. I could get exactly two heads. That's six out of sixteen probability. Three heads, four out of sixteen, and four heads, one out of sixteen. So we see the different possibilities here, 0 through 4, are the number of heads I can get, and their associated probabilities. And that gives me a probability distribution. Um, here's, here's, a, here's an interesting one. Here's where we just toss a single coin repeatedly until we get heads. So we're just going to keep tossing that coin over and over and over again until we get heads. All right. Now, how many tosses could it take? Well, it could take thousands. So, like, you could be very, very unlucky, right? It could take you many, 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 many tosses before you finally get heads. You could be sitting there your whole life and never toss heads. Very unlikely, for sure, but it is possible. And so, the um, the the outcomes are actually there's an infinite number of them. It goes from it could take as few as one toss, but there's no limit to how many tosses it could be. But as, as we see, the the likelihood that it takes you uh, more and more tosses, uh, the probabilities go down and down and down and down, right? So, but we have a distribution with an infinite number of possibilities and their associated probabilities, okay? And so this can happen. You can have an infinite number of, of, of possibilities. Okay. Next up, what is a sample space? Well, first of all, what's a probability experiment? A probability experiment is just something that you perform. It's a repeatable procedure that uh, results in some kind of outcome, okay? And um, so it could be rolling a die or tossing a coin or throwing a dart, right? The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes for that probability experiment. So if I'm rolling a die, uh, or let's do, let's do the first example here, tossing a coin, if I'm tossing a coin, what are the possible outcomes? Well, I can get heads or tails. So that's my sample space. It's a set consisting of two things, heads and tails. Uh, my probability experiment was rolling a six-sided die. Um, my, uh, my sample space, I keep forgetting I can point at this thing. My sample space is the set of possibilities here, one through six. Right? These are the possible numbers I can get when I roll a die. Um, drawing a ball from a bag of red, blue, and green marbles. I guess I was, I was thinking of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I think, subconsciously. I just noticed that just now. That's sad. Anyway, um, draw a ball from a bag of red, blue, and green balls. Um, the sample space would be, well, you could either draw red, blue, or green. These are the possible outcomes. Choose a random position on a 12-inch ruler. Well, now this one, if I have a ruler, I can choose... Um, any position on that ruler, right? So any number between 0 and 12. And this is actually an infinite number of possibilities here because I could choose 1 and a half, 1 and 3 quarters. I could choose pi, right? 3.14159. All those real numbers between 0 and 12. Here's an example where we have an infinite sample space. Throw a dart at a dartboard. Well, the sample space would be the set of all possible positions I could hit on the dartboard. Right? When I throw that dart, it could land anywhere on that dartboard. So if I was just keeping track of the numerical position that it hit, I would be, just be tracking the numbers. The darts, dartboard goes from 1 through 20, and then there's the bullseye. So just 1 through 20 and B, bullseye. Um, if I was actually measuring the location of the dart, well, now there's an infinite number of places it could land, right? anywhere in a circle. Right? So this sample space, depending on how I'm measuring it, could be just the numbers 1 through 20 and the bullseye, or it could be an infinite number of positions, uh, you know, 
uh, infinite number of points uh, within a circle, right? So different sample spaces. Um, determining the sample space is important because it's going to help us uh, compute probabilities, okay? And that is what this is about. Uh, determining probabilities when outcomes are equally likely. So in the event that every outcome is equally likely, then the probability of an event is given by uh, the size of the event divided by the size of the sample space. Okay, it's the size of the event divided by the size of the sample space. What do I mean by the size of the event? Well, in the situation where the number of possible outcomes is finite, the size of the event is just the number of outcomes in the event. And the size of the sample space is just the number of outcomes in the sample space. Okay, so here's some examples of experiments that have equally likely outcomes where we could use this procedure to compute the probability. If you flip a fair coin, well, you could either get heads or tails. Because it's a fair coin, each possibility is equally likely. Getting heads or getting tails are just as likely as each other. So that would be equally likely outcomes. Rolling a fair six-sided die. Well, because the die is fair, that means each number is equally likely to occur. So that makes it equally likely outcome. So I could use this method if I'm talking about rolling a fair six-sided die. Drawing a ball randomly from a bag of red, green, and blue balls. Uh, assuming an equal number of color, uh, e equal number of each color ball. All right, so if, if there's the same number of red, blue, and green balls, say there's six of each, then I'm, it's just as likely to draw a red as it is to draw a green as it is to draw a blue. So that these would be equally likely outcomes. So I could use this probability method. All right. Um, now, um, let's go back a little bit. And let me just reemphasize. Um, what we're doing is we're measuring the size of the event and dividing by the size of the sample space. Let me just point out, that's actually what we were doing back here, right? Uh, look at the pie chart. Um, when I take the, if I did the strongly agree portion, I'm just taking the size of this wedge and dividing by the size of the entire pie. Because the wedge is 20%, when I divide this by the size of the whole pie, I get 0.2. So that's exactly what we were doing. Right? We were taking the size of the event and dividing by the size of the sample space. Okay, Let's look at these examples here and compute these probabilities. All right, So um, let's get some stuff out of the way on my desk. All right, so roll a six-sided die, find the probabilities. Well, what's the probability that we get an even number? Okay, well, first of all, it's fair, six-sided die. So that means I have equally likely outcomes. So I can use the method that we just talked about, all right? So what's the probability of getting an even number? Well, let's think about, well, let's first write down the sample space, all right? The sample space, we said before, the set of possible outcomes when I roll a die, that are the numbers one through six. What's the probability of getting uh, oh, sorry. Uh, what's what's the event of getting even? All right, and even is just two, four, or six. Okay. Let's write down these other events as well. All right. What's prime? Prime are the numbers two, three, or five. These are the numbers that are not divisible by any number except one and themselves. Um, Except one. One does not qualify as a prime number. There's, there's good reasons for that, but um, that's another math class. Um, why is four not prime? Because it's divisible by two. Why is six not prime? Because it's divisible by two and three. But these other numbers are prime because they're only divisible by one and themselves. Okay. And then what is at least five? Well, at least five means I got five or six. So that's this event. So if I was talking about the probability of getting an even number... I'm going to take the size of the event, there's three things in there, and divide by the size of the sample space. There's six things in there. So the probability is three-sixths, or one-half. What's the probability of getting a prime? 
Well, there's three things in here. There's three, six things in the sample space. So the probability is 3 sixths or 1 half. What's the probability of getting at least 5? Well, there's two ways to get at least 5. And there's six things in the sample space. So 2 out of 6. That simplifies to 1 third. I'm just counting and dividing. That's all I'm doing. All right? So um, let's look at the next one here. Let's look at the uh, uh, flip three fair coins. Find the probabilities. OK. Well, first thing we have to do is write down our sample space. When I flip three fair coins, what are the possibilities? Well, I can get heads, heads, heads. I could get um, tails, heads, heads. I get heads, tails, heads. Heads, heads, tails. I could get um, tails, tails, heads. I could get heads, uh, tails, tails. I'm going to run out of space here. I could get um, tails, heads, tails. Or I could get tails, tails, tails. If you're wondering how I did that so quickly, what I was thinking of is I said, first, I'm going to write down the number of ways I can get it with no tails. Well, there's only one way, right? So done. Now, how many ways can I get it with exactly one tail? Well, that was easy to write down. I just put the tail in the first position, second position, third position. Then I said, how many ways can I get it with exactly two tails? Well, that's the same as having exactly one heads. So I have the heads in the first position, well, last position, first position, second position. And then I said, well, how many ways can I get it with exactly um, Three tails. Well, there's only one way. So I've I know that I've written down everything because I considered every single possibility. All right, that's how I was able to do this so quickly and systematically. Anyway, I've got the sample space. Okay, and uh, now what about exactly one heads? Uh, exactly one heads. Well, that's just uh, how many ways can I do that? Well, I can. That's this one. Oh no, that's two heads. It's this one, this one, or this one. Right. So um, that's the event, tails, tails, heads, uh, heads, tails, tails, or tails, heads, tails. Right? That's how you can get one heads. What about all tosses exactly the same? Well, that's either this one or this one. Heads, 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 or tails, tails, tails. And what about more than two tails? Well, let's see. Which ones of these have more than two tails? Well, it's just this one, right? More than two tails is just tails, tails, tails. So what are the probabilities? Well, the probability of this one, it, well, there's three ways to do it. And how many things are in the sample space? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the probability is three eighths. What about the probability of all tosses being the same? Well, there's two ways to do it, and there's eight things in the sample space. So two-eighths, or in that case, you could simplify it to one-fourth. <laughs> Sorry for my sloppiness. Greater than two tails, right? Well, there's only one way to do it, and there's eight things in the sample space. So the probability is one-eighth. Okay, so we're just counting and dividing. That's all we're doing. Um, <clears throat> let's look at this one here. Um, Drawing a ball from, uh, no, flip a coin and then randomly draw a bag, a ball, a ball from a bag consisting of an equal number of red, green, and blue balls. Okay, so um, let's, let's think about what the sample space here is. Well, I um, flipped a coin, so I can either get heads or tails, and then I drew either a red, green, or blue ball. So I either got heads and drew red or I got heads and drew blue, or I got heads and drew green, right? Or I got tails and drew red, tails and drew blue, or tails and drew green. So this is my sample space. I've tracked the coin and the color of the ball. So what's the probability of getting heads, all right? Well, the probability of just getting heads is any one of these, right? So it's HR, HB, 
HG. What's what's uh, what what's what's the event of getting a green? Well, there's two events that had green in them. There's this one, HG, and TG. What about heads and red? Uh, only one, HR. Blue or tails. All right, well, this one's got blue, so HB. Um, this one has tails, so that one counts. This one has tails, so that one counts. That one has both blue and tails. Uh, and this one has tails, so it counts. So I just need to make sure it has blue or tails, one or the other. And each one of these has one or the other. All right? So what are the probabilities? Well, the probability of getting this is just, well, there's three ways to do it. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six possibilities. So three-sixths or one-half. The probability of getting green, well, there's two ways to do it, so it's two out of six, or one-third. Here, there's only one way to do it, so it's only one out of six. Well, that just simplifies to one-sixth. Here, there's four ways to do it, four out of six, which simplifies to two-thirds. Okay, so when outcomes are equally likely, it's just a matter of counting, okay? All right. Um, now, it's important to realize that in some cases, uh, you won't have equally likely outcomes, okay? So if you flip an unfair coin, if there's somebody tries to trick you and gives you a coin that's more likely to comes up, come up heads than tails, well, okay, outcomes aren't equally likely, so this method isn't going to work anymore. If you roll an unfair six-sided die, if somebody's trying to gamble and uses a shaved die that is more likely to come up with one number, or a weighted die, it's more likely to come up with one number than others, well, that's, this method isn't going to work. If you draw a ball randomly from a bag of red, green, and blue balls, where there are more of some colors in the bag than others, then... Um, then then this method isn't going to work, right? And um, if you throw a dart at a dartboard, you know, I would think that for most people, th the positions on the dartboard aren't going to be equally likely to occur, right? Because most of us have at least a little bit of skill in aiming, right? So we're going to tend to hit around the number that we're aiming at. We're not going to, not every number on the dartboard is going to be equally likely to be hit, okay? So that would be an example of, not equally likely outcomes. So we couldn't use that rule for these cases. Um, and here's some uh, distributions that illustrate the same idea. So when I flip four uh, fair coins and count the number of heads, you can see that the outcomes aren't equally likely. Um, you can see that zero is less likely, getting zero heads is less likely than getting exactly one heads, and that's less likely than getting exactly two. So the outcomes are not equally likely here. If you roll two dice and add their values, these are not equally likely outcomes. It's tempting to say, well, hey, I rolled, you know, these are my possible outcomes, right? So what's the probability of getting um, uh, a, a seven, right? Well, there's 11 numbers here, and it's just one of them, so I might guess and say the probability is one out of 11. But that's not true. It doesn't work. Because these are not equally likely outcomes. And in fact, if you look at the probability distribution, you can see that some outcomes are more likely than others. And in fact, the probability of getting a seven is actually one out of six. It's much better than one out of 11. So if you tried to use that rule, you'd be wrong. And finally, a nice example of um, non-equally likely outcomes that fools people is the Monty Hall problem, or the three-door problem. So um, I recommend that you uh, look this up um, I'm going to post this link on my webpage here and, um, and watch this video. All right, I just wanted to cut it there because um, I didn't want to say too much. I think I said too much. So I'll just uh, click the link. Actually, I put it, uh, I'm going to put it below this video. So there's a link. You can just click it below the video here and um, in the details, and it'll take you to that Monty Hall video. So anyway, hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video.